Hello Internet, my name is the Golden Stalfos, and today we're going to talk about Skypea. Quite possibly one of the best arcs in One Piece, for a completely different reason than any of the other arcs. See, Skypea is an entirely self-contained little adventure off in a world that's very much separated from the rest of the world. It has its own politics, its own people, its own divisions, and the conflict of this arc is mostly not revolving around the Straw Hats. They show up and participate in the conflict, but it would have happened whether they were there or not. And while they are ultimately the reason why things go the right way, it could have just as easily happened without them and nobody would have known about it or cared about it. But while Skypea is largely self-contained and most of the emotional conflict comes from the history of the Shandorian people and the nature of Enaru and all that stuff, this isn't an arc you can easily skip by any means. It sets up so much about the world. This is the first place where we're introduced to the idea that not all pirates are really like Luffy, and some of them don't care about dreams or treasure or whatever and just want to be evil bastards and get rich. This is where we first meet Blackbeard, who is the major antagonist of the series moving forward. This is where we see a lot of growth from Luffy as a pirate when he reenacts the scene that Shanks played out at the first chapter. This is where we get introduced to the dial technology, which enhances a lot of the gear that the crew uses moving forward. This is where we first start to get some information about Roger and his possible connection with the Poneglyphs. It also expands our understanding of what the Poneglyphs are and why they were left this is also the arc where we start to see a lot of serious damage piling up on the Mary, which is really important for the next arc. This is also the arc where we first get a real introduction to Hockey. Although it's called by a different name and doesn't get fully explained until several arcs later, this is where it shows up in a lot of enemies and allies in full force for the first time. It was foreshadowed as early as chapter one, but we haven't really truly gotten a lot of demonstrations of it until now. We don't get any new crew members in this arc, and our most recent addition to the crew, Robin, doesn't do anything in the arc. She reads the Poneglyph, and she fights that one fat angel. That, that, that's, that's literally it. She's just like completely in the background and does nothing for the entire arc, which is good. It's absolutely essential to establishing that huge moment on Eni's lobby. Ugh, it's so good. Anyway. Skypea is also notable for being an almost entirely action-focused arc. There's a lot of stuff early on about establishing the world and the characters and why anyone should give a shit about fighting this Enaru guy, but after that it's basically all non-stop fights for like 70% of the arc. And so most of the narrative weight ends up happening in the flashback sequence with Mont Blanc Nolan and Great Warrior Kagura. Now, of course, this is one piece, and even the fight scenes aren't completely devoid of emotion. There's lots of moments when characters are trying to defend someone or something important to them or, you know, whatever. And it, it just, like, it's great. It's great like always. But it's notable that this arc spends a lot less time on character growth and such, and a lot more time on fighting. Which isn't inherently a bad thing. The fights are spectacular and dynamic and incorporate a lot of cool new mechanics. The dials and the mantra and the new devil fruit powers and all kinds of goodness. I especially like the creativity on display during Luffy's fight with Enaru. It's brilliant and dynamic and so much back and forth and it's great. I also think it's really cool that not only is Luffy outclassed by Enaru, right? Like, Enaru has a more powerful fruit ability, but also, let's be real, even if you took away Enaru's fruit ability normally, right? Like. If he was just a normal person who got this strong, he would be stronger than Luffy. As evidenced by the fact that even though he constantly relies on his fruit and doesn't do anything else to fight, he still basically wins most of the fight. <laughs> and even though Luffy is able to pummel him repeatedly, he still isn't able to win very easily. Enaru still survives, Enaru still walks away from all of the damage that Luffy's able to inflict, and he still traps Luffy and throws him off the ship. It's crazy. 
And because Luffy is struggling against someone who's stronger than him, he has to keep coming up with new inventive ways to fight that keep his opponent off guard and allow him to move forward. And of course it helps that his opponent relies too heavily on his Logia fruit and thus doesn't take advantage of his potential superiority in some areas. I mean, it takes him till like 20 minutes into the fight before he thinks, hey, maybe I can cut this guy. And then even after he figures that out, he isn't really able to cut Luffy because he isn't used to fighting in this way. And then he just kind of abandons that strategy after a while, even when he totally could have used it to finish him off after he trapped him in the gold ball and everything. You know, and the big emotional moment from this arc is when Luffy rings the bell. And it's really interesting because that moment doesn't really have anything to do with fighting Enaru. It doesn't have anything to do with protecting his friends or getting past this obstacle or seeing the cool island in the sky. It's all about helping out this random stranger who helped him out a little while ago. And of course it means something to the people of the Skypea as well, but it, it doesn't have to. As far as Luffy's concerned, none of that matters. He had to ring the bell for the old man and that's it. And it's really interesting because none of the other big emotional moments in One Piece are like this, where they rely on a side character and have nothing to do with the main cast or their struggles. I mean, I suppose you could make the argument that Marineford's big emotional moment is like that because Ace is a side character, but he's Luffy's brother, so it matters a lot to Luffy. You could even make a similar case for Sabaody because the first big emotional moment is when they're going to rescue Cammy, and obviously Cammy's a side character, but she's been in the story a lot more, and she's in real danger because of the Straw Hats, and while that is a fairly emotional moment, I would argue that the real emotional gut punch of Sabaody comes after that, when Kumo shows up and everyone goes flying. I think it's really important that this moment is driven for a character that Luffy will never see again. Right, like he went to the island, he got past it, and when they land, they'll be past it. They'll go somewhere else. And so this is the only chance he'll ever have to communicate with the old man. Just like ringing the bell was Kagura's only way to communicate with Mont Blanc Nolan. And... That thematic resonance is the important part here. Like I said before, all of the narrative weight of this arc rests in that flashback and on this one moment with the bell. Because these moments resonate with each other, because this fulfills everything the flashback was building to, it feels super satisfying and brilliant to us as the audience. And it means so much more to us than it ever could to any of the characters individually in the story because none of them know the full story. Like, the Shandorians kind of know what happened with Mont Blanc, Cricket, and Kagura, but they don't know that Cricket's ancestor is here. Wait, have I been saying Mont Blanc Nolan when I meant Cricket this whole time? Shit. Crap. <laughs> okay, go back. I, I said Cricket all those times. Forget about that. Or wait, actually, is Cricket the old one or the young one? Crap. No, I was right. I just had a momentary brain fart. Nolan's the one from the flashback. Cricket's the one in the current era. Moving on. Anyway, the Shindorians don't know about Cricket. They only know about Nolan. And the Skypeans don't know about either of them. And none of the Straw Hats know about Nolan. Well, they do a little bit, but they don't know the full story and they don't know about Kalgra. And so none of the characters get as much out of this bell ringing moment as we do. But they all get something out of it. For the Skypeans, it means they're free from Enaru and that they have a life again. For the Shandorians, it means that their ancient and sacred mission has been fulfilled. For Cricket down on the ground, it means that he can move on with his life and find another dream to dream. For the Straw Hats, it's the sound of victory and triumph. Everyone gets a happy ending when that bell rings, except for all the minions of Enter who have died so far. 
I mean, heck, even Enaru, even though he gets defeated here, he still gets to go to the Endless Earth in the sky and have a little side adventure with the aliens. If you only watch the anime, you wouldn't know that, but on the cover page of each manga chapter, there's like a little side story involving the villains, and one of them details Enaru's journey to the moon, where aliens, who are apparently the ancestors of the Skypeans, live, and it's weird. <laughs> So yeah, it's a really great arc with a really great send-off. There are some things this arc doesn't do. It doesn't give us any new members of the Straw Hat crew. All previous arcs up until this point have. And in fact, we hardly even get any screen time with Robin, the newest member of the crew, who basically just sits there, has a fight with this fat dude, and then reads a poneglyph. That's about it. <laughs> But I would argue that's a good thing because of the emotional development that's supposed to happen with her character in Annie's lobby. And quite frankly, if she had gotten more screen time and interaction with the crew prior to Annie's lobby, it wouldn't feel as meaningful when they go to war for her. Like if CP9 had taken Usopp or, or Nami, like of course they would have gone to war, of fucking course. There wouldn't have even been a question about it. But because they took Robin, who's new and has questionable loyalties and no one is really that attached to her yet, you know, I mean, Zoro even talks about the possibility that she left voluntarily and maybe, you know, maybe she betrayed them and we should just move on. Like, that's not a discussion they could have about anyone else on the crew. And so the fact that they still went to war for her and the fact that they shot down the government's flag for her, like, that has a whole new dimension of meaning because she's a background character up until that point. So, yeah, Skypea had handled it very well. And I, I just, I love it. Skypea is an amazing, wonderful arc. It's brilliant. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next life. Laters. All right, thank you guys for watching that video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that dumb YouTube stuff. Follow me on all my other social media stuff. I got Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and I have a Patreon if and only if you have money to burn. And if you do have money to burn, maybe consider donating to an actual charity instead. There are always a few linked in my description, just in case. I mean, I do appreciate it, but there's probably people who can use it more than me. Me and my girlfriend play video games she's never played before on twitch.tv slash thegoldenstalfos every Saturday, sometime after 6 p.m. U.S. Mountain Time. And also, I sometimes use that channel to do challenge runs and game creation tutorials, so if you're into any of that, please check that out. Also, if you check out our streams and you like the performance that my girlfriend puts on, she streams by herself on her own channel called Awesome Possum Pie. And be sure to leave positive comments down below for my girlfriend who volunteered to edit my videos for free because she's awesome. And yeah, thanks so much for all of your support. And thanks again for watching.